Well, good morning and welcome to Sun Up. I'm Clint Griffiths. Today we're going to be doing something that a lot of you have either done or thought about doing over the years, and that's rehabbing a piece of old farm equipment. What we have here is about a 110 gallon tank sprayer, and as you can see, it's in pretty tough repair. And here to help us do the work is our uh, expert, Randy Taylor. Randy, it looks like you've got a sprayer piled up on this table. Well, I've got a lot of it piled <laughs> up here. That most of the most of the plumbing components we, we've got all right here. But uh, basically, like you said, we've got a, a sprayer that uh, a friend of mine kind of acquired, and I've been uh, rebuilding it for him. And uh, so, you know, we had to go through the entire plumbing system is going to be all new on this sprayer. And so, you know, that's one of the things when we think about spraying is, you know, drift is a big issue. Right. And so uh, making sure that we have our plumbing system set up for our sprayer is probably the, the, the key thing right. of having it all. Now, it may not look real pretty when we're done, yeah. but it'll have uh, essentially some of the best uh, spray equipment on it that you can get. Really, And that, that really is the key to a sprayer, I suppose, is having that good equipment. The rest of it, like you said, is not necessarily going to look gorgeous and, and you could work on it from now till whenever and not make it look pretty. Or I could just go buy a brand new one. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. So where but, do we start? Well, I started with the pump. The first thing I tried to do is, is, uh, is set it up to think about, okay, what size pump do I have to have? I have to be able to supply, you know, a spray to the entire boom, and I also have to be able to provide some some agitation back in the tank, so some overflow there. And basically I, uh, you know, picked out the most economical pump that I could find. I, I guess when you start thinking about this, it's yeah. got to be big enough to do the job. Right. But then again, you don't want to buy one that's too big. And so uh, so this this is a little, little not quite a 10 gallon a minute pump. And we need about five to six at the boom. So it's going to give us another four gallon a minute approximately back in the tank for agitation to make sure our chemical stays mixed in the tank. Sure. Uh, went with a roller pump. Probably one of the, the, again, one of the most economical. Uh, the nice thing about it is, is you just get a PTO adapter. Okay. It goes right on here. And so now then, from a simple standpoint, it goes right on the PTO. We have to secure it so it doesn't spin. And, uh, and then th th that'll provide our pumping. Uh, we'll come out of that uh, into some valves. So we'll come up into, uh, basically into our, our boom control valves. We'll flow into those. I've got a couple of them. Wants to put a handgun on the sprayer, so we'll okay. do that. So we'll put these two valves together with, uh, with, with some of the hardware that we have. Uh, one of the keys that we'll have with a, with a roller pump is it's, uh, it's a positive displacement pump. So it's going it's to you know, uh, pump a fixed volume of fluid every revolution that it, that it goes around. Okay. And so, uh, so with those, we have to have a pressure relief valve in them somewhere. Because okay. this pump is capable of generating you know, 120, 130 PSI, and we don't want to spray at that pressure. Right. So uh, we'll put a pressure relief valve in there, and that's where our recirculation will come back from for our, uh, for our agitation back in the tank. Okay. Uh, Another very key piece of equipment that, that uh, we, we uh, will be putting on here is a pressure gauge. Uh, you need to know the pressure you're running so that you can uh, uh, get your, your sprayer calibrated correctly. Right. But also pressure, you know, affects our drift quite a bit. So sure. we want to make sure we're right there. Uh, it's a fluid filled gauge so the, 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 the needle will be stable you know, uh, operating in the field. We'll mount it where you can see it directly from the tractor seat. And, uh, and so that'll be, uh, that'll be pretty handy there as well. Uh, one key, uh, I think we've, we've talked in the past about gauges. We're gonna be running low pressure, you know, 40, 50 PSI max probably on this. Right. Uh, a lot of times you'll see gauges at your farm supply stores that are up to 300 PSI. Well, I don't want a 300 PSI gauge if right. I'm gonna be running at 40. And right. so, uh, so I, I selected one that'll actually be able to show us uh, 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 where we are at those uh, at those lower pressures. Again, the right size for the job. Yeah. Then just a bunch of fittings, you know. It's like you, <laughs> you make a list, you go to the store, you come home, you make another list, you go back to the <laughs> store. Some new hose clamps and stuff like that. And then uh, and then coming into the nozzles, one of the things we've got, I've already taken a couple of these off, but it has these uh, older style uh, uh, nozzles on it where essentially the uh, the nozzle would, uh, would screw right onto uh, the, the, the cap would screw right on with the nozzle, you know, okay. inside of the cap right sure. here. And uh, the, one of the challenges with these is, you know, is, is uh, when you shut the boom off, there's no, uh, nothing to keep it from flowing. And so until all the hoses are drained, it's sitting there dribbling. One of the things we're going to go back with is one of the diaphragm uh, control valves, is, is diaphragm, uh, pressure diaphragm uh, nozzle body. So now when you shut the boom off, you've got about a 10 PSI nozzle body here. So 
It'll, it will keep dribbling until the pressure gets to about 10 PSI, and then it'll shut it off. It'll shut it off. Uh, okay. The nice thing about that is, is, is with this system, when you've got your, your little, uh, your, your strainer in here, if your filter at your nozzle body, that as you shut it off, now, uh, you could come back if you've got a nozzle that's not flowing right. You can take this off, and it's not going to just start dribbling out everywhere. Right. And so, uh, so a little safer operation there, and a little easier to get at this stuff. And, and it should so, save uh, some product over time. Yeah, it'll save it'll save you a little bit of product. And uh, but uh, we're going to go back with a little. Uh, a little, a little different nozzle, a turbo T-jet as opposed to just a straight flat fan, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully to reduce drift. Uh, right. Most of this, uh, this sprayer is probably going to be spraying a lot of pasture and mm. so a lot, of, a lot of 2,4-D products and so mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we keep that product on that, uh, the field that we want to spray as opposed to going somewhere else. So we're going to put a little, little bit more expensive nozzle on it. But, uh, hey, you know, it's not my money, I'm just putting it <laughs> That's together. That's right, you're just putting, doing the work, <laughs> putting it together. Yeah. All right, so where do we start? Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to start taking off some of the uh, nozzles off of the frame, okay. I'm going to start putting the pump together and, and, uh, and measuring some hose and, uh, and getting my filter on the tank. All right, sounds good. All right.